Here's my summary of the session that we were in today. How many people were in the session, um, the panel this morning? How many people saw the panel? Right. Oh my God, AI. It's the end of the world and we know, as we know it, and I feel fine, right? That, that's kind of the summary. All right. Let's talk about AI. When we talk about education and learning, we have a lot of ideas in our heads. And sometimes we're using the same words for two completely different things, even in our own heads. And then we talk to somebody else, and they're using those same words for two different things. And this is before we even get to the fact that we all speak different languages, and we, we use different words, or we're coming to the same language from two very different locations, from two different cultures. So, okay, I speak English, and I talk with my colleagues in the UK or Australia, and sometimes we're using the same words the same way, and sometimes we're not. Do we all use the word course the same way? No, in my country, a course is usually about three months long. A student registers for it. There's some amount of content, and they finish it up, and they take a whole program, and then they graduate. A course of study in other countries is the whole program, and each of those topics is called a module. Wow, was that an eye-opener when I first heard it. And now we get into, I'm sure there's something that's the same way if you're going from um, Canadian French and Parisian French, and then you probably have the same kind of thing happening with different places in the world that speak Espanol, and it happens. But even when we're speaking the same language and we're in the same country, we have these different ideas. And sometimes we have so many assumptions that then we have an argument, and everybody thinks they're using the word the right way, but we're using the same word in two different ways. And the biggest word is education, and related to it, learning and teaching. So. I want to talk briefly, and some of you have seen this before. Has anybody done one of my um, curriculum theory workshops? Is there anybody here who's, who's been in one of those? Okay, um, a couple of years ago I used to do these a lot. So let me talk about these four ideas of education a little bit, and then we're going to talk about, very quickly, because I only have a few minutes, um, how AI can relate to these. So. You have your scholar academic. This is, we are engaged in education to identify and promote the best scholars. We teach mathematics the way a mathematician does mathematics. We rank our students, we look for the best students, we promote them on to university, to graduate school, to become tenured faculty somewhere because they are scholars and we want them to be publishing. At the same time, at a lot of universities, we're also trying to have this very pragmatic kind of model where we're trying to create well-educated citizens who are able to be independent and contribute to society. They're going to go get a job. These are intention. And we often mean, when we say education, we're talking about both of these things, right? But that's not all. We also have this learner-centered, constructivist kind of education where we're trying to help every learner become a lifelong learner. We're trying to help people set their own learning goals and regulate their own learning and use metacognitive strategies and open pedagogies. Maybe we're even going to let them set their own goals in the course. There are very few universities who operate this way. Um, Antioch in the US is one that does this. And they don't even have grades. At the end of the term, you, you get a written narrative that you co-construct about how, you, how well you did. So now we've got three different definitions of learning. Did we identify the best scholars? Did we help people reach their own goals? Did we help everyone get to a certain level of some basic competencies in mastery? And then we have the idealist is the educational program helping to transform people into more active leaders who can go out and change the world and make it a better place. We all hope that education is going to do all of these, but in any given moment, we're usually focusing on one or two. So let's talk a little bit. That's a very fast introduction to curriculum theory. Let's talk about how AI could help us with these four things. This is what happens when Elizabeth can't sleep at night. <laughs> and all of a sudden I realize that I don't like my existing slides. And I'm gonna do something completely different. And you folks have to put up with my horrible handwriting. 
But I think these ideas are important, and that's why we're doing it this way. So we had those four quadrants, and what I want to talk about a little bit is the different ways that AI affects that, because how you will use AI will depend greatly. We'll see if this image ever comes up. Will depend greatly on what you're trying to do and what your definition of learning and education is. So let's pretend that I've got my slide up here. I'll just talk about it anyway. Up in this quadrant, we have that academic scholar. Well, one of the things that we could use AI for is not to punish students for incorrectly citing a reference, but to help them find the right citation. Or if you're a researcher and you've got an idea, you know it's an idea, it's the idea that you want to use in this paper and you can't remember where you read it, we could use AI to help scan the, the volume of published work that we've been exposed to and find the right reference for an idea that we know we have, we know we've heard it in the academic community, and we want to make use of that. We could use AI in academia to scan all of the new journal articles that are coming out and summarize them and help flag the ones that we are going to want to read in detail. Not to shortcut reading the article, but to find the article that we want to read. So we could use AI for things like that. We could use AI as a writing coach to help our students become more articulate, to help them become better at expressing their ideas. So this is the, the scaffolding kind of thing that I talked about earlier today. Those are the ways that AI could be part of the education, the, the academic scholar model. So let's talk about the everyone will achieve basic competencies model. This is where predictive learning analytics really comes in. This is where we, when we talk about preventing dropout and predicting student success, yeah, this is a complete failure. I'll just talk. When we talk about preventing dropout and uh, encouraging student success, we're really talking about this mastery model, pretend it's down here, um, where we want every student to achieve a certain level of competency, and we don't want anybody to fail. In the academic model, we assume that the average grade will be a C, and some of the students will fail. That's part of the model. In the pragmatic mastery model, we want as many people as possible to pass. We're actually less worried about identifying the best than we are about helping everybody become capable and competent and self-sufficient. So that's where we have models that look at how learners are behaving and compare them to previous learners that were successful by some definition that we've defined, usually something to do with a passing grade or being able to complete the program. And we're trying to identify which students look more like successful students and which students look like struggling students. And we're going to intervene. And that's what a lot of predictive learning analytics is doing. That's what IntelliBoard is doing right now. But that's not the only thing that we could be doing. We could be using AI to help encourage people to learn new things. OK, I've got five minutes left. I'm going to move along. Lots of things we could use AI for. PLA is the biggest one. In the area of individualist learning, we can use AI as a coach, as a learning coach to help people identify their own goals and to help them develop a plan for how they will achieve those goals. So those are the ways that something like a chat GPT model, not necessarily to teach somebody, but to keep encouraging them to establish their goals, to ask them how they're doing on their goals, to ask them how they're doing making a plan for how they're going to do their goals. And the closest thing I can think of right now is Duolingo. Is there anybody here who's used Duolingo to try to learn another language? A fair number of people have played with it. It's not bad. And one of the things that it does is it assumes that you have a goal, that you want to learn a language, and it keeps reminding you. And, and it tells you people who have gotten at least this far are more likely to complete the whole thing. It encourages you and it tries to tell you a little bit who you are resembling right now. Are you resembling somebody who's going to really do well or somebody who looks like they're slipping? So we can do things like that. And then the fourth thing is the idealist model. The idealist model is about empowering learners to take charge of their own learning and to go out and do something with it that's actually going to change the world. And I, I suspect that's Martin's favorite model because of the whole empowering educators thing. But what we can do with AI there is try to help learners find other learners who are like them, 
who have similar ideas, to try to help them find mentors, to try to help them be empowered to speak. So I talked about this a little bit this morning, where the idea of AI as a way, whether it's a large language model like ChatGPT or a visual image generator like Midjourney, is to give the voice to people who have trouble articulating themselves. I, I flatter myself that people come up to me after these talks and say, wow, you were so articulate, you explained these things. It's great that I can do that, but not everybody can, and I want to give those people a voice. So we can encourage people in the idealist quadrant to use tools to empower themselves, to take control of the voice of their own, their own lived experience, the experience of their own communities, and amplify that and make it more powerful. Um, I'm probably running out of time here. How are we doing? Two minutes. Okay, so just a couple more ideas, very quick ideas. Other things that I had thought of and written down in my little scribble here. Um, I would like to use AI to scan lots of journal articles and construct semantic networks that link research to research so that I can trace ideas, see how they flow through different things. In the, the pragmatic, we have a huge opportunity um, we all thought that maybe competencies would be a really great thing. We would tag all the content in our courses by competency, and then if a learner struggled, we'd be able to say, oh, well, you missed this quiz question. It has this competency. You can go to this content, and it will help you with this particular thing. And um, has anybody here tried to tag all the content in your course with particular keywords or competencies or topics? Oh, my God, nobody is going to do this. That's the kind of thing that AI could help us with. I tested it. So in the United States, we have a framework called Common Core. It's a competency framework. And the competencies are well described with a whole paragraph about each one. So I took some uh, assignment that an instructor had in a course that I had access to and said, which core competencies does this assignment relate to? And it did a quite good job of matching just a paragraph description that the instructor gave me with an actual competency from this framework, because the framework is well described. And then I said, what are three resources that you could offer to a student who wants to prepare for this assignment? And because the framework is well described, it went out and found me links to five, actually, really nice writing resources that related to the assignment. So metadata tagging, tagging all the images in our content to be able to make them more accessible to people who have vision issues. There's a describe tool in mid where you can give it an image and it will give you a written description of what's in that image. Then you can turn around and put the written description back into mid-journey and it will generate a new image. It's kind of weird. Um, but these are all the things where we are becoming overwhelmed with all the content that's available. We can use AI to help filter that down so that humans can do the real work of teaching and learning. Again, AI is a tool. It's something that can help us become better at teaching and learning. I do not see it replacing teaching and learning. Thank you.